UFC is now facing calls for a boycott after accepting a record-breaking $100 million deal from Bud Light. And oof, this one pains my heart. I am not the biggest UFC guy, the biggest MMA guy, but uh, I do enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, we've had several different MMA fighters on the show. We, we plan to have more on in the future. And uh, typically, we're, uh, you know, we here at Tim Cast and many of our friends, we're, we're, we're big fans uh, of UFC. But signing this deal with Bud Light is like spitting in my face, spitting in your face. Now, there's a lot of people, uh, we, we talked about this last night on TimCast IRL, when the news broke, we're now seeing calls for a boycott and the reaction, which I think is, a, is getting really interesting. Uh, we had Cash Patel on the show, who in real time was like, I'll text some fighters and see what they're saying. And they're pissed. They're pissed. A, a couple people super chatted us and said, oh, it doesn't matter, dude. I'm going to keep watching UFC. I don't care if Bud Light's on the floor or not. Let them take the money all the way to the bank. Some people are saying this could help fighters get paid more money. I really don't think so. I don't think uh, uh, you're going to see fighters get paid more money from this. That's going to be based on like ticket sales and stuff, but perhaps, perhaps. But the issue now is, look, I like UFC. My friends hit me up and say like, hey, the fight's on tonight. It's like, oh, cool. Like, you know, uh, Saturday night or something, we'll go out and the, the fight will be on and we're watching. Uh, I remember we were, uh, I can't remember, I can't remember where, where we were. We all watched the fight. Uh, we ordered a bunch of tacos and burritos and guacamole. And we had uh, uh, the, one, one of the fights on. It's just a fun time. It's a fun time. I, I, can't, I can't tell you a whole bunch of fighters. I can only tell you the ones that like I've met we've had on TimCast IRL. But Dana White of UFC announced that UFC would be partnering with Bud Light to the tune of $100 million because they share core values. And there's so much here that's insulting to a lot of people. We're actually seeing tons of people call for a boycott. Now, I don't think this is going to be very, very strong. I don't... I don't want to stop watching UFC. I don't, I don't watch it religiously, but like when the fight is on and my friends want to watch, like we're going to watch it. But this is a tough one because Bud Light not only refuses to apologize for the Dylan Mul Mulvaney fiasco, has since doubled down and began providing or maintained providing funding for many lewd and lascivious public events. Now, by all means, you want to argue uh, like th there's this wholesome leftist fake argument about pride parades being just like celebrations of who they are and who they love. You know, if that was all it was, I'd say fine. But this is a lie. And this is what the left does. They lie. Sorry, I'm not saying the right never lies. I'm just saying like, hey, man, if a story comes out and it's from the left, just assume it's a lie. Remember, remember, uh, don't say gay in Florida. Total lie. Might as well call the bill. Don't say straight because the bill in Florida would prevent teachers from talking about heterosexual couples. It was just don't have sex ed for kids th third grade and younger, and parents must be allowed to, uh, uh, to know what their kids are being taught. But since I was a little kid, and I've known this since I was like 10 or 11, pride events are so uh, obscene. I mean that in a literal sense, like nudity and stuff. I'm not saying like in, in an emotional insult kind of way. Like, no, no, literally people are engaged in obscenity as per defined by, by law. My mom wouldn't let me go out. She, 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 no, you can't go out during the Pride event. Why? There's a bunch of naked people engaging in gratuitous behavior and sex acts. And I'm like, I thought it was about love. That's what I was told. Apparently it wasn't. It was a, it's, it's about something completely different. It's, a, it's, it's, it's about gratuitous sexual activity. And so Bud Light's sponsoring that. When uh, uh, there was a, a, a Yingling sponsored venue that had an all ages drag show within like a day. Yingling came out and said, we talked to the venue. We, they, they assured us this event is now going to be 18 and up only. We sponsored the, the venue, not the event. It was no problem for Yingling to be like, uh, if I was not familiar with Yingling, it's an East Coast beer, hugely popular out here. I mean, uh, I, I'm not a beer drinker, but it's, it's, it's probably my favorite if I was going to drink a beer. I used to be a Blue Moon guy, but uh, Yingling is just like the go-to when you're out here. Everybody wants it on the West Coast. But, uh, but yeah, they had no problem. No problem. Let, let, me, let me read the news. Let's go through this. I'll show you some of the reaction. On Tuesday, Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch and UFC, an American uh, MMA organization that holds more than 40 live events annually around the world, announced a new multi-year marketing partnership, according to an online statement shared by the beer maker. Starting January 1st, Anheuser-Busch will become the exclusive official beer partner of UFC. And as part of the partnership, Bud Light will become the official beer in the U.S., according to the statement. Here's where it comes. Here, here, here's, 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 do I got, where, where's this tweet at? All right. I want to tell you what this is all about. Oh, it's, it's, it's right here. 
This is Donald Trump at UFC. All right. Uh, I, you know, and, and Donald Trump coming out at, at UFC to the entirety of the, of the arena, screaming and cheering. You hear this? These people are going nuts for DJT. Cash Patel says. This is nuts. Man. Look at this. Donald Trump shows up with Kid Rock and Dana White, UFC 287. And this was April 9th. And everybody goes wild, screaming and cheering. Cash Patel goes on the show last night. You think Donald Trump's going to walk out with Dana White and a Bud Light in his hand? No way, dude. Now, I do think it's funny. If Donald Trump came out and drank a Bud Light, that might actually help the brand. I mean, I feel like if there's anything that could help Bud Light, it's Donald Trump saying, you know what, I'm going to drink a Bud Light. And a lot of people are going to be like, OK, all right, we're going to give him another chance. But uh, I still think a lot of people are going to be like, no way. This is what the left doesn't understand about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a leader with a large fan base. But these people on the left have never been to a Trump rally nor watched one because Donald Trump comes out and he says something and they boo him. He was talking about vaccines. They boo him. These people are like, it's a cult. I'm like, oh, yeah. Show me the cult leader who gets booed at his rally. No, it's that people like and trust Donald Trump, but they have no problem criticizing him when he should be. Now, don't get me wrong. There are culty Trump followers, uh, Trump supporters. Let's read more. Well, the terms were not disclosed publicly. ESPN reported that it was the biggest brand sponsorship, uh, biggest sponsorship deal in UFC history. Critics were especially enraged that the deal means the Bud Light brand which will replace Modelo, will have a heavy presence in all of the MMA organization's content. The news of the deal triggered a quick backlash for UFC and reignited boycott calls for the Brewer. Several celebrities, including Kid Rock, John Rich, Travis Titt, Tritt, sorry, uh, uh, joined the mounting right-wing boycott calls that led to a drop in sales. This we know, this we know. So we have this from Robbie Starbuck. He says, Bud Light is paying $100 million to be the official beer of UFC. And you know what? Lighting that money on fire would have been less embarrassing than what's about to happen. Fighters are going to hate this. Fans will hate it. The customers aren't coming back, Bud Light, period. You made your bed with men who think they're women. Now sleep in it. I get that Dana thinks he has, he has to take the easy money, but this damages the UFC brand and puts his fighters in bad spots where they will speak out against it. Watch. Embarrassment awaits. Sure. Dana White knows this. Here's what I'm thinking. Dana White's attitude is probably like $100 million. Ooh, <laughs> it's a lot of zeros, baby. And in, in the deal, uh, let, me, let me see if we have the, we have the quote from, uh, from uh, uh, Dana White. Let me see if I can pull this one up. Yeah, their core values align. Let me get the, he says, quote, there are many reasons why I chose to go with Anheuser-Busch and Bud Light, most importantly because I feel we are very aligned when it comes to our core values and what the UFC brand stands for. And what does it stand for? And what are those values? Monetary values, baby. A bunch of zeros. That's what it's all about. And $100 million, that is a lot of zeros. So here's what he's probably thinking. I don't care about Bud Light. They're going to they're, they're gonna, they're gonna give me $100 million. Fine, whatever. We'll slap their logo on whatever they want. I'm not involved in politics. I don't care. You think, I, I'm really curious, right? This, this is a bold play by Anheuser-Busch, and it was probably their only move, $100 million to rescue their brand. Well, the brand is still falling. As of September, sales are still down and continuing to decline. And everyone's trying to make excuses for why that is. You've got uh, analysts being like, well, it's not because of the boycott. It's not politics. It's because uh, the beer tastes bad. It's like, well, it does taste bad. <laughs> Come on, dude. Bud Light is not a beer you drink when you're looking for a good, legitimate beer. OK, like Yingling, I think tastes good. Bud Light tastes like nothing. Bud Light is what you drink. What, what, what is it? Someone super chatted this. They said Bud Light is, is what you're trying to drink, uh, is what you drink when you uh, you don't want to drink beer, but you want to drink a lot of it. <laughs> you don't want to drink beer, but you want to drink a lot. Yeah, you're trying to get drunk. All right, that's it. So the idea here is Dana White's probably thinking, I'm going to make $100 million off this deal. I don't care what anybody says. You, for $100 million, you can, you can say whatever you want about me. Sure. But times, they are a change in, man. It's, it's, I, it's, it's not even so much about are people going to care or not. It's 
Where do we end up in five years? What does this mean for Bud Light? So the issue is this. Dana doesn't care. People are going to watch UFC. I, I really don't see. And I, and I think this is true, too. I don't see people being like, I'm not going to watch UFC because Bud Light sponsored them. What you're going to see is the fighters spitting on the logo or mocking Bud Light, flicking off the logo. You're going to you're going to see like press conferences. They're going to be like F Bud Light. Don't buy it. What Bud Light did may be one of the most damaging things they could have done. They wanted to enter an arena where they could get their manliness back because they gave it away. Oh, they tried this. They tried Harley Davidson. Remember that? That's right. Where we, we got this one. Look at Bud, this is from June. Budweiser ad touting Harley Davidson mark, marked cans mocked, mocked. And now literally we are hours. It's been like, thir- was it 14 hours since the news broke that UFC did this deal? And already there are people on Twitter saying boycott, boycott, boycott. All Bud Light did was put themselves in the line of fire once again. They should have just shut up. Bud Light, become the garbage beer you are meant to be. Say nothing, shut up, and let people who don't care buy your beer. But you keep trying to jump into the political fray. UFC fighters, out of any sport, probably have the highest percentage of people who are speaking out and telling woke BS to shove off. You know what it is? I wonder if it's the raging testosterone. Man, I met a lot of UFC fighters in my day. I don't know, I don't know, a lot, maybe like five or six. And what I find is, When you have a dude who is immensely strong and knows he could beat the crap out of you, people who have been in serious fights, and uh, it's not just UFC fighters, people who've been in in, in combat and conflict, man, they brush off all this stuff. I I saw a video posted earlier of this woman being like, I work, I'm working my first nine to five, and it's just like, I don't even get home like by till six. And it's just like this crying. Yo. This is the thing. When you've experienced hardship, conflict, chaos, etc., these little things, they make you laugh, right? And so this is why I think you get a lot of UFC fighters who are going to speak out and say, screw you. Some people have pointed out they actually don't make that much money, so there's not much you can take away from them. Some were saying they get like 50K per fight or something like that, and they might only fight once a year if they do. And it's like, okay. I mean, the big name fighters get a lot of money. But yeah, it's not it's not like you're getting a ton of money all the time. So maybe that's another big reason why they don't say a lot. Or I'm sorry, uh, uh, they, they, they do speak out because they don't make a lot. Now, I don't know how much the average UFC fighter makes, but I think it actually has more to do with the fact that uh, they are very strong men. The, um, the, the, the determination that is required to become a, a, an MMA fighter, even if you're not even the best, to face down, to fight in the ring, to get in shape, to work that hard, that is determination. And it is that reason why I think so many MMA fighters speak out and speak up. Here we go. We got this from uh, Brian Krasenstein. He says, Bud Light returns to the official beer of the UFC. This is a liberal guy. I never understood the outrage. A company that tries to be open to people of all beliefs, uh, uh, ideologies, and demographics epitomizes the freedom of capitalism. You don't have to agree with who they target. Their goal isn't to just target people who hold the same values as yourself. Wake up and realize that this world doesn't revolve around you and your own ideologies. See, you know, I think the Krasensteins have proven that they just say whatever they, they should they, they need to say to make money on, on X, right? They just, oh, I don't get it. Really? After 10 years of far leftists, woke uh, leftists, critical gender theory and race theory, getting people fired from their jobs, get, forcing companies to drop certain product lines or pick up certain product lines, you don't get it? It's really simple. The average person who drinks Bud Light despises what the woke left does. So when Bud Light decides they're going to embrace it, you get a backlash. People are sick and tired of being told if they say certain words, they're fired from their job. And so when Bud Light says we will align with this group, I'll tell you this. A lot of brands, a lot of brands get woke, go broke. But the go broke part, you know, it's not it's sometimes not even so pronounced. Victoria's Secret recently. They announced that they're bringing back the angels because in 2021, they said, we're getting rid of the angels. No more sexy ladies. We're going to do morbidly obese women and female athletes. Surprise, surprise. Sales dropped by around six percent. Six. Now, maybe it's because of this. Maybe it's not. I think it is. 
a lot of big brands don't have strong ideological bent uh, 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 or their their base is not that, you know, political. So Victoria's Secret, most people don't care. But 6% were like, this is gross and ugly and I don't want this. You know, I think the issue with Victoria's Secret is that you have a lot of women who are looking at the angels being like, I want to look like that for my husband or boyfriend or whatever, or maybe even other women. They want to be impressive and they want to feel good. They want to feel like the best, the most attractive. You put a bunch of frumpy, unattractive women in the ads, and there's a lot of women who are going to be like, I don't want to look like that. I don't want to be that. And the sales slump. For Bud Light, you have a lot of rural conservative types who are drinking these beers. Are they drinking Bud Light in New York? I mean, sure, of course. But a lot of these hipsters are doing the micro brew and stuff like this, or they're having like cocktails or whatever. It is the trope, I would say. And I think it's proven by the sales that you got regular conservative type individuals who grab, you know, a 12 or 24 Bud Light and hang out and have a drink. And then Bud Light decided to get woke. And so what, what happened? They lost 30 percent of their market because their market leaned conservative and rural uh, to, to, to that degree. How, how are Bud Light sales faring six months since the boycott? Surprise, surprise, an article from one month ago shows that Bud Light was still suffering. 30 percent slump and still down. Harry Schumacher of Beer Business Daily said that the figures, the latest figure showed the decline in Bud Light sales has become quasi permanent. But hold on. They just sponsored Harley Davidson. That's manly. You see what they tried to do? They were like, let's sponsor Harley and do Harley cans. And then what happened was everybody made fun of Harley Davidson. UFC has just <laughs> its so cringe, dude. You know what, man? Oh, yeah. So it's it's so amazing. Everybody's got their price, right? The Hill writes, uh, this is from um, uh, October 21st, only a few days ago. This is before the UFC deals announced. Bud Light is still sinking. Here's why. And they're like, it's not because of the boycott. It's a mediocre offering with, they say it's the sixth. Uh, uh, it was it, among eight beers tested. It came in sixth place. Below average customer satisfaction. Decision making that underestimated customer diversity, egocentric decisions. And uh, that is specifically about Mulvaney. But come on, bro. Bud Light took a hit when they decided to do the Dylan Mulvaney ad. UFC is going to get hit as well. Is Donald Trump going to want to walk out to Bud Light? Oof. Now, what may happen is Trump points at it, laughs, and everyone starts laughing and booing Bud Light. And then Trump starts laughing and clap. This is an anti ad campaign. And if that's the case, you think Dana White cares? He's laughing, being like, I know what's going to happen. I wonder if he even told him. I bet he talked to Bud, to Bud Light and Heiser and was like, you know, it's going to happen. You are going to get humiliated. You will be mocked. The fighters will insult you. The crowds will boo. And they're like, we have to do it. We have to do it. These people are so stupid. But Bud Light, please listen to me. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Right now, Bud Light, here's what we'll do. You, you Anheuser-Busch, you hit me up and, and, and you ask me to consult and I'll do it for free. I don't want your money. I don't want your money. I'll consult you for free right now. Apologize apologize, apologize, apologize first for the Dylan Mulvaney campaign, which you never did. It's probably too late at this point. Then stop funding pride events. Announce you've done it. Because here's the funny thing. A bunch of gay bars in Chicago announced they would no longer carry Bud Light because Bud Light wouldn't support them enough. And there was a boycott from the left. And they're like, what do we do? Everyone's mad at us. Well, who's your biggest market share? If you're going to spend $100 million on UFC, a crowd that stands and give Donald, gives Donald Trump a standing ovation, then you might as well just apologize. That's my advice to you. But let's, let's, let's talk about conviction, conviction. I'm going to throw this in at the end. In a broader stroke, Andrew Clavin says, I'll discuss my friend Jenna Ellis Esquire on Friday's show. But let me say now, I'm charmed by those who imagine themselves as heroic martyrs in Jenna's situation, as I'm charmed when I see little boys wearing their blankies and capes and pretending to beat up the bad guys. I find that to be uh, cringe. Ooh, cringe. Andrew Clavin, big fan. Uh, this one, this ain't it. That's what they say, right? This ain't it. Let me tell you. If Bud Light came to me and offered me $100 million, to put a Bud Light logo behind me on every show, I'm going to say no. 
I know. And now there's people saying, what an idiot. You're so stupid, Tim. Take the hundred million dollars just for the Bud Light logo. Are you crazy? Let me just start by saying first, we do I here at Timcast. And I've explained this as it pertains to like Jenna Ellis and to UFC. We talked about the politicians, the people in Congress who want to get rich, Nancy Pelosi's net worth. I will tell you this. In my mind, I genuinely do not understand the desire to make so much money. And, 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 and I will explain this to you guys. Not everybody's rich. That's the point. People who are rich, few and far between. There comes a point where you have so much money, it is hard to keep track of and you don't even know what it's doing. And, I, and I'm not trying to be a dick or humble brag. This is a reality for people who are very, very wealthy. You start uh, investing. You have to invest. You can't just have cash. And it's something I've explained a long time ago. Why buy like a fancy car? I always saw this when I was younger. I was like, well, I, would, I would never buy a house like that. That's crazy. You don't need a house that big. And then it's like, oh, you can't just sit on cash. Inflation. It, it, it's just it's you're, you're 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 losing buying power. So you need to buy things to retain value in other ways. Then you need to hire people to manage those investments and retain those. And it's just like at a certain point, it's not changing anything about my life. It's not making my life more comfortable. It's not helping my friends or my family. You know, like I've taken care of my friends and my family. And I'm at the point where if Bud Light offered me $100 million, I'd be like, for what? For what would I do with $100 million? L serious. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing the work that I want to do. Mark Zuckerberg would ask, would he ever sell Facebook? And he was like, why? I just make another social media platform. What's the point? And that's the thing. People are like, everybody's got their number. Some people got their number, man. For Dana White, it's $100 million. I don't understand what Dana White's going to do with that money. Maybe he pays the fighters. And that's a cool thing to do that I can respect. He comes out and says, guys, I'm taking this money from Bud Light and I'm, I'm distributing among all the fighters. I don't need any more money. I'm rich. But the fighters are going to get are going to get paid more every year that Bud Light logo is on, on, on the floor. And people are going to be like, OK, that's kind of based. That's kind of based. But instead, he came out and said, we share our core values. What Andrew Clavin is saying about Jenna Ellis, charmed by those who imagine themselves as heroic martyrs. OK, you know, I, I made the joke the other day. I'm not a coward. I've just never been tested. I'd like to think that if I was, I would pass. It's a line from the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. I have been tested, not to the degree that Jenna Ellis has been tested, uh, facing multiple felony counts. And it's tough. But uh, I've stood in front of uh, 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 a six foot tall Antifa guy who started swinging at me and I stood my ground. And I, and I let him take swings at me. For this, Tucker Carlson invited me on his show to talk about it, saying, this guy's getting in your face and swinging at you. And, you're just, and I'm like, he was doing this thing where he would swing and then stop. And I'm like, let's go, buddy. You're going to hit me? Let me see what happens. I'm not moving. You're not telling me I can't be here. I have been, uh, the, 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 to, and, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. You know, not facing multiple felony counts never happened, you know, to me like that. I did stare down a, a year for driving on a suspended license. That pissed me off. And I told the judge I had been coerced into accepting that deal. And the judge was like, what? So when I was facing, uh, I got arrested. I bonded. So like I was released right away and then someone had to come pick up my car. They said it was a year maximum, which you're, and it's not really going to happen, right? And so I was told. Either accept the plea deal or I will go to jail for a year. When I said, OK, fine, I guess. I think I was like, what, 18? I think I was 19. No, I think I was 18, actually. And so I have no idea what's going on. And the judge says, uh, you have entered a, a plea of guilt. I said, yes, Your Honor. I was like, have you been coerced in any way into accepting this plea? I said, yes, Your Honor. And he goes, wait, wait what? And I was like, uh, excuse me? He's like, who coerced you? And I was like, him. And I pointed to the prosecutor. And I'm like, he says if I don't plead guilty, he's going to put me in jail for a year. And the judge is like, get a lawyer and come back. And, uh, you know, ultimately we agreed to uh, expunging it, court supervision, all that stuff. And uh, no, I get it. The difference here was this was not a battle of my convictions. This was like, I had no idea what was going on, but uh, I gave a little resistance. I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, you know, whatever. Ultimately, I had to pay, uh, I think, $150 and I wasn't allowed to drive for three months. So, uh, I, you know, fully, fully admit a little resistance there, but. You know, I, I ultimately uh, uh, took a plea that resulted in um, the, the charge was removed. Now, some people are saying about Jenna Ellis right now, but this is different. What she's talking about is she stood up and said that, you know, Donald Trump, 2020 election, all that stuff. This is an important constitutional battle for this country, not 
something that's immaterial to the world and, and things like this. When I was facing uh, one to six months, my brother was facing six months. I was likely facing a month. I, uh, they told me, if you fight this, it's you know, like you'll, you'll, you're going to lose. And then you're going to go. They're going to try and get you for a month because that's the trial tax. They're going to, you know, and, and again, one month. This is not multiple felony counts. But I said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go to trial. I'm going to make them fight for it. I am going to make any I want. I want this to be known. If you want to go to a war with me, I am going to make you drag your fingernails to the bone. I will give you all of the resistance imaginable. And I've talked about this quite a bit. In my view, the way you deter, the way you deter people taking advantage of you is you make sure they know you want to victimize somebody, go find a victim. You want to come at me? I'm going to make sure it hurts. And this is this is my view on uh, uh, muggings and violence. And you know, what? maybe one day it results in me getting mugged or something. There you go, deep state. When a guy tried to mug me in in uh, uh, Chicago, I laughed at him and told him to F off. I didn't have any money anyway. I've told the story before, too. And I just kept walking. I didn't stop. The guy was taller than me, claimed he had a knife. And I'm just laughing. I'm like, my attitude is, dude. I am going to make sure that if you try and take from me, you're at least going to get someone who's going to try to beat the crap out of you. You want to go victimize somebody. There's a guy who's going to cower in fear and hand over his shoes. You want to come at me. I'm going to start swinging. So don't bother. Why? It's not that I want to fight somebody. It's not that I think I'm a tough guy. It's that this is the smartest path to take in preventing someone from targeting you. Let them know there's two people right here. Go bother that guy. He's going to cower in fear. Me? I'm going to make sure it hurts. I'm going to make sure you regret it. And we're going to turn whatever your, your, your mugging charges, you're going to have to turn it into murder. Because I'm not, I'm not going to bend the knee to you. And so my point is this. I bring this up because we're talking about convictions. And, you know, Andrew Clavin, I see this tweet, and this is something I directly addressed yesterday. Now, I don't know if he's responding to what I had said, but I look at the Bud Light stuff. I look at these stories and someone willing to be like $100 million. Wow. Would you turn that down? I'm not you. Some of you commenting saying you're stupid. You take the money. Nah, I'm not interested. I don't know what I'm alive for. If I'm going to take $100 million from Bud Light, why? So I can go on a boat? Let me explain boats to you guys. Owning a boat sucks. <laughs> the joke is the, the best day uh, for a boat owner is the day they buy their boat. The second best day is when they sell their boat. The best boat is your friend's boat. Those, those are the jokes. I'm like, what do you do with $100 million? Do I want to ride in a helicopter to the airport instead of taking a taxi? You can already do that. They're charters. They cost a couple hundred bucks. You're in New York, you're in Manhattan, you want to go to the airport? It's like $500 to, to rent a helicopter to fly you to the airport. What do you need your own helicopter for? You know, people own private jets, right? Do you think they fly in them all the time? What they do is they charter them out to other people at low rates. This is, this is the world, man. The world is not made for the ultra wealthy. The world is made to accommodate the, the working class and, the, and poor people because there's substantially more of them. I don't know what you do with $100 million. I really just don't get it. Now, I understand he could give that to the fighters, to the staff, raise wages that I totally get that I totally get. And there may be people saying, Tim, if you put that Bud Light logo behind you, you could give all of your staff, you know, a couple million dollars each. And I'm like, none of that makes sense. None of it makes sense. Sorry, I don't know what I would do with that money. I suppose you can argue it would ensure the existence of Timcast for many years to come. It would give us a tremendous tool in winning the culture war. But if I were to compromise my values and put a garbage brand like Bud Light behind me. We're not winning the culture war. We're admitting that we are losing it and that there is a monetary price on selling out. It comes to varying degrees. It's not absolute. What I am saying is not that in every circumstance all the time, you never back down. You never retreat. No, sometimes you must surrender. Sometimes you must retreat. And for that, I give Jenna Ellis respect and Andrew Clavin respect. I have never faced down the barrel of multiple felony charges. However, in this instance, I'd like to believe that uh, you're, you're, you're not, you're not going to get me to back down. Like it is, it is, it is going to go, it's going to be nuclear. I'm, I'm not playing these games, dude. What Jenna Ellis is talking about is her constitutional obligation and duty to this country and to her client. 
And what she is doing now is selling out Donald Trump. Selling him out to avoid a lengthy, expensive legal battle. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you Julian Assange. Andrew Clavin says, charmed by these people who imagine themselves heroic martyrs. Yet Julian Assange, for now like 12 years, his life has been destroyed for the work that he believed in. And these are the people that I look up to. So when I see Jenna Ellis crying on TV, when I see Dana White accepting $100 million, don't forget who I really see is Julian Assange, a journalist calling out corruption, misdeeds, reporting on the corruption within the government. Never forget that what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks worked on exposed a lot of what the Clintons had been doing, a lot of emails getting released. And for this, Julian Assange is being assassinated, executed. Don't come to me and say Jenna Ellis is, is doing the right thing and the smart thing when I every day am reminded of what is going on with Julian Assange. It is remarkable that Julian Assange went to the Ecuadorian embassy and for a decade lived in a box under constant surveillance with threat of death. Hillary Clinton reportedly saying, can't we just drone this guy? You want me to defend Jenna Ellis? I'll defend Julian Assange. Maybe in 100 years, when all of this is resolved and we've won, they'll build a statue for Julian Assange and explain what it means to stand up for what you believe in, to resist, to fight, and to say, I will not bend the knee. Guess what? As the story goes, Julian Assange could have just given up information on their sources. And, and the, where their information comes from to Donald Trump. And that probably would, would have resulted in a pardon. The, the, the story is, and I don't know if this is confirmed, that the Trump, Trump circle had sent some individuals to meet with Assange that basically pr promised him a pardon if he gave up his data. And Julian said no. That's remarkable. After nine or 10 years in, 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 in living in a box in the Ecuadorian embassy, they said, we'll make this all go away. You'll see grass, flowers. You'll wake up on the beach with the sun lighting your face. Just give up. And Julian Assange said no. And for this, he has been extra. He, they, 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 uh, um, they're, they're trying to destroy him. They dragged him out of the Ecuadorian embassy. They're charging him with a bunch of insane federal charges in the United States. He's not an American citizen. So don't come to me and talk about taking the hundred million dollars. Don't come to me and talk about Jenna Ellis when the people I actually look up to have sacrificed their lives and have been forgotten. You know, most days go by and people don't think about Julian Assange. And there's not many people who, uh, who, who remember his fight. And this is what they tell you. They say, Jenna, when you're locked up for Donald Trump, and everyone's forgotten your name and abandoned you, you'll tell yourself it wasn't worth it. Tell that to Julian Assange, who's never given up. Tell that to him. Tell me that we should, we should, uh, we should forgive. Oh, Dana White's going to get $100 million. It's a smart move. Oh, Jenna Ellis, she, she, she pleads guilty. Sidney Powell, I plead guilty. It's a smart move. Those are not the people that I look up to. These are not the people I respect. And these are not people I will defend. I will ask you to support and defend Julian Assange and not to forget him because he's an example of what happens when you tell the machine F you and I will not back down. And that is heroism. Whatever, you get it. Buy Bud Light, do whatever you want. I don't care. I'm me, you're you. I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. You don't got to agree with me. I can be wrong. Fine. But I don't, I don't, I don't live in that world. And in, in the deepest core of my being, I don't understand why we're alive. What is the fear? Being in jail is it really the worst thing in the world. It's bad. It sucks. Torture is horrifying. What's happening to the J6ers is terrifying. And that's, that's, that's scary stuff, man. It's scary stuff what they could do to you. But what's the point of being alive? I just don't understand. So you can be on a boat. You want to be on a boat. It doesn't cost that much money. You want a nice car. It doesn't cost that much money. It's not hard. I remember I once saw a guy in his 20s driving a Lotus. And it's like a $40,000, $50,000 car at the time. And I'm like, man, it'd be so cool to have a car like that. 
Yeah, it's a couple hundred bucks a month. It's not that difficult. You know, you, you get to the point of like Elon Musk, Bill Gates, where you got billions of dollars and it's just like, to what end are you alive? If not to seek out, to improve, to be better, to change the world. If you wanted to recoil and go and, and go and hide in the corner and hide in a, in a building and have your video games and your VR and your private jet. If you're making a million bucks a year, right? You're a millionaire. A million bucks. It's a lot of money. Very few people make that to that level. A hundred million for this deal. You're making way more. I don't know if Dana White's getting all the hundred million. Let me let me let me break it down for you. You want to fly in a private jet? OK, uh, New York to Florida charter ranges from like, you know, 15 to 20 thousand dollars. A lot of money, right? But you don't need to buy a private jet for millions of dollars to do it. You want to buy a private jet? Well, you can get a turboprop for a couple hundred thousand dollars. What? Only a couple. That's right. That means you're spending three grand per month. I'm not kidding. Three thousand dollars per month. And you've got a turboprop from the 80s, which is not a Gulfstream. You're not really going to be flying coast to coast or something like that. You want a Gulfstream? Fine. But when people fly private, right, it could cost you from like eight to fifteen thousand dollars for regional private flights. A lot of money, I know. But a hundred million dollars you do not need to do something like this. Then you have something like net jets, where you, you, you spend a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy a percentage of a fleet, and then you pay for the fuel and landing costs, and it dramatically reduces the cost, and you're flying private. My point is this. To be wealthy, to have these luxuries, to live at the top of a giant skyscraper and have that penthouse, it's not as much money as people think. Right. People think that you have like $100 million in cash and you have this private jet. Some people do. But to fly private, you don't need that much money. You really don't. To live in that penthouse, you don't need that much money. You want to live in like a $5 million house or whatever, you're going to need like $20,000 disposable per month, which means you're probably making a million bucks a year. This is what people uh, don't get. They hear these stories where it's like celebrity buys $20 million mansion. And it's like, yeah, it's an investment property first and foremost. They're spending maybe like fifty to eighty thousand dollars per month. That's a lot of money. These people make a lot of money, so that they have about an excess of a million bucks in cash. However, they're not intending on like living. It's an investment property. They 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 buy it. This is what people don't understand. These big mansions they get rented out. I'm not kidding. People think that like all these rich people like that. There's a lot of ultra wealthy that have these big mansions, but a lot of them get chartered out. There's no reason for a single individual to buy a 50 room mansion and live in it. What they'll do is they'll uh, they'll find a company and say, we want to do special events. And then they'll say, OK, you know, every weekend we have an event coming. The event costs 100, 200 grand and they're making money of it. People who own private jets charter them out to make money off of because they don't actually own or use these or they're paying a, off a loan. My, my point is just this. You don't need to make 100 million dollars to live the ultimate life of luxury or whatever. Perhaps you want to own that billion dollar, that $100 million yacht or whatever. And then just, what do you do with it? They charter it out. My point is this, man. The best things in life are free. Fact. And, uh, you know, it's that, it's that old song, I want money. And it's just like, to a certain extent, money is important. Around maybe, I think the average person, uh, uh, once, once you get to like 200 to 300K per year, this is a study, People hit that that wall, that apex where they have what they want to have. You have that much money. And then when you do feel like traveling on vacation, you can fly private if you want. Making two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year. And so the real the real issue for a lot of people is they assume the gap between 50K and 300K is actually the gap between 50 and 100 million. It's not. You will find that peak stability and happiness and comfort comes around, you know, several hundred thousand dollars. I think they said that in the U.S. it's like 150K on average is where you get to that point where you're comfortable and then where you're truly excited and, and living the life of luxury is probably several hundred thousand dollars. I think if you're making like 550, you're in the top 1% and then you truly get to experience being on the yacht, being on the cruise and all these really nice things. But a hundred million dollars, whatever, man, you get the point. What are you if not your values and your beliefs? Now, this is what separates me from so many people, I guess. My life and what I am is what I believe and what I think must be and not what I must own. But there are a lot of people who believe life is about what you can get and what you can own. And I feel that, 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 that there's an essence of evil in that. 
I would rather live in a cold steel box than have a bunch of money and have a couch and watch movies or I just don't understand. And maybe it's because of the way I grew up, but I'm also deeply inspired by the founding fathers. These men who looked at a document, the Declaration of Independence, and said, gentlemen, we cannot win a war against the crown. We will lose. And after we sign this and declare our names to this demand, declaration of independence, we will sacrifice our sacred treasure, our sacred honor, our children, our family members, our lives, our homes. Each and every one of the founding fathers who signed that document knew they were signing their death warrant. How can you grow up in a country learning the stories of these great men and women who said, I will sacrifice everything I have to make what is now the greatest nation this country has ever seen? And then tell me that Jenna Ellis did the right thing. I shouldn't compare Jenna Ellis or any of these people to the founding fathers. Fine. But those are the those are the stories I grew up listening to. Their children were captured. Their homes were seized. Men of wealth and means who had what everyone desired. And they said, I will throw it all away for what I know to be true and right and just and what must be. And we got lucky. France intervened. And the crown was forced to surrender. And these men who expected to lose, this is a fact. The founding fathers thought they would lose. And they stated they were sacrificing everything just to say it, just to say it, and to eventually be arrested as terrorists. And instead, they birthed the greatest nation this, this world has ever seen. Tell me that story and expect me to do anything other than sacrifice the core of my being for what I believe to be true and just and correct. Good luck. That's just me. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel, and uh, I'll see you then.